Our guest in this segment is Dave Jackson. He is running for sheriff of Berkeley County as well. Dave, good morning to you. Good morning, all. And uh, let's uh, hear the David Jackson story. Uh, what, do you, what have you been doing? Where are you from? And uh, how did you wind up here? Uh, I was originally from Northern Virginia, in Chantilly area. Uh, went to work uh, in the Air Force in my early years after high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, left the Air Force after 10 years. Uh, joined the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C., uh, soon after 9-11, I went to the Federal Air Marshal Service. After two years, almost two years there, I came back to the Metropolitan Police Department and put in for deferred retirement mm-hmm. in two th- end of 2016. Bill, note he said deferred retirement, not phantom retirement. I noticed that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Phil's still listening. Phil's still listening. He'll, he'll respond. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you wind up in Berkeley County? Uh, I've been out here numerous times as a kid with my parents. And I came back out to the area as an adult, fell in love with the area. It's just beautiful. The people are sincere and genuine, and I just decided to move here and been here ever since. What year was that? Uh, 2007. And have you done anything in the uh, 17 years you've been here in regards to uh, boards or any other uh, employment in the area? Oh, no, sir. I, I, I stayed with my job, and after that, I just worked around the house. And, and why are you running for sheriff now? Um, I believe... Uh, the department needs to go in a strong direction toward the future, and I can help move that in that direction. I have felt the department is full of professionals. It's one of the premier departments, I believe, in West Virginia, and I believe I could lead it in that direction. Have you ever run for elected office before? No, sir. Yeah. This is my first. Yeah, so, so what have, advice have you gotten about uh, how to win an elected office from your friends? Um, just be genuine. Be sincere. Be truthful. Uh, let... Don't tell people what they want to hear. Tell people what they need to hear. Bill Stubblefield, one of our co-hosts, former president of the Berkeley County Commission. He has, in that role, dealt with the sheriff's department and uh, budgets and and whatever on an intimate basis, Bill. Yeah, uh, David, I'm always uh, uh, curious what someone needs when they use one of these kind of convenient catch-all phrases, lead to the future. How will your vision of leading to the future differ from the path they're on right now? Um, I would believe modernizing the department beyond what it is. Let's stop there. How well do you know the department? Just from what I hear from deputies uh, from other jurisdictions, what I see from the department, and what I can read from the department. So you, you don't think it's as modernized as it should be. Specifically, what, what would you do to modernize the department? I, I believe uh, drones are the, are the things leading us into the future. Because if a child goes missing or a critical missing person, you could utilize a drone with thermal imaging, and that can cover miles upon miles in the air better than what you could do by putting 15 officers on the ground walking through. What about the uh, the legal challenge of invasion of privacy? That's up to the courts. I mean, my job is to uphold the law. All right, it's it's up to the courts. It's the sheriff's position, which I believe it should be a nonpartisan position, because just like court judges, court judges are nonpartisan. I'm not here to serve the party. I'm here to serve the people. So, with as you're saying, with uh, invasion of privacy and stuff like that. That all varies on interpretation on what do you mean? I mean, invasion of privacy is such a broad subject. Are, are we talking about monitoring social media pages? Are we talking about uh, wiretaps? Uh, we were talking about drones, and that's how I was talking about okay. drones. Yeah. Well, if you're talking about drones, drones, are, you have, you have to have a specific set of guidelines. And I believe if we would have an oversight committee uh, a citizens advisory council, something we utilized in D.C., that would oversee if there are complaints or anything. It would be a nonpartisan. If there was a major complaint of it, I would ask for an outside agency to conduct an investigation, and I would act upon their ruling from that. Yeah, uh, this is uh, drones have been used, but uh, uh, in Berkeley County, but mostly for land measurement purposes, and I don't think they've been used in law enforcement. I'm, that's an interesting idea, and I just wondered how much legislative action we would need, we'd need to have in place uh, to allow you to do that. And I don't know the answer to that question. Neither do I, sir. Yeah. David, are you running as a Democrat? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Uh, Mr. Gilstrap. 
<clears throat> well, whoever's advising your campaign obviously left out the importance of bringing food to the radio station for, <laughs> <clears throat> for the purpose of your interview. I'm just saying for, you know, it's that horse is out of the barn now, but you know, it's, it's important. Don't you think? I, I mean, think that as, there actually need to have a change of advisors, David. There's yes. apparently some serious fault in that advice you're getting. So, uh, that was mostly a joke. No, sir. All right. Do you have time? I'm no, 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 no. Actually, no. No, we should we should move on with, with with the important stuff here. So, why get back into law enforcement after after all of all of this time? I mean, it's a lot of time. I mean, were you air police in the in the air force? Uh, no, I was a crew chief. Okay, so uh, you've got Metro PD, then Air Marshal, back to Metro PD. Yes, sir. Retire. Yes, sir. Relax. So, you know, I got nothing better to do, so let's go back into law enforcement. Why? I saw the opening. Now, of course, I read social media. I've, I've heard lots of things, but I've mostly read the news articles of the previous administration. I thought with that opening that I would put my two cents in thinking I, I came from the Metropolitan Police Department, a professional the police department, and I thought I could implement some of the ideas that we utilized that were quite beneficial and showed positive results here in Berkeley County. Okay, expand on that. Yes, sir. Uh, Metro PD <clears throat> is not without its controversies over the years, right? Yes, so sir. what specific programs would you take from the D.C. Metropolitan Police Department and you would like to see infused into the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office? Oh, yes, sir. One would be uh, the crisis, inter in crisis interdiction officer, meaning we would be trained to help people in psych uh, psychiatric distress, dealing with homelessness, dealing with, it's more of an empathetic approach to dealing with the citizens. And I believe crisis intervention is the way of the future because it'll show the officers, it'll de-escalate, it'll teach them ver verbal judo, which will help de-escalate through conversations with people. It'll help them with social services because we'll have a whole list and we'll have these people supporting us, whether it's through the community uh, services, through uh, the VA for homeless vets that we find on our travels, or people just in psychological distress or psychiatric distress. Um, I, I believe that's one. I believe utilizing uh, narcotics, uh, interdiction, we have great task force from what I understand, multi-jurisdictional. I would bring more feds online. I would bring uh, the feds in and I would utilize their money, their funding to not just go after the users, but I would want the distributors and the manufacturers. Those are the people I want because if you start choking off the supply point and getting the users the help they need, you're, you're gonna, the drug problem will go down. I mean, it, will it eradicate it completely? I can only wish. But that's that's some of the things that I would do with those. Uh, I would do school safety and security. I would have training uh, with our deputies, our reservists, and school, like teachers, uh, nurses, to be all trained in Narcan because drugs have become a, a critical epidemic in this area, in the Eastern Panhandle. So do you think... I, I asked this question, <clears throat> Davy Jones was in, in the eight o'clock uh, slot. So I asked him the same question. The, when running against an incumbent, a voter faces a, a two edged uh, decision. One is who do I vote for and why should I vote for you? And why should I fire the other guy? Why should I fire the incumbent? So I want to talk about that side. Why, um, why should we take, why should we push Sheriff Blair out of his job in favor of you? That, that's really an interesting question. I mean, I never looked at it that aspect. I mean, Sheriff Blair, I, I wish him the best. I hope he has a tremendous Absolutely. impact. Um, if I, I don't know, I believe I could bring a different point, point of change. I mean, I, I don't know Sheriff Blair and his background. I spoke to him briefly on the phone for 10 minutes one day, trying to get a little bit of the background from Berkeley County Sheriff's Office. Um, but as for that, Sheriff Blair has his ideas, I have mine. It's up to the people to decide which ideas are the best, what's going to benefit the community. I, I'm going to come across with mine. I, I'm sure he's sincere, I'm sincere. It's what's going to be, I, I look for it, what's the best for the community. So there's not an existing policy that, that you think is, is wrong-headed that you want to change? Um, as for the internal policies, I mean, uh, 
I would have to get a hold of their orders or uh, their certifications and everything, and I would have to review those. And I would have to talk to Sheriff Blair about getting a copy of that. But as for what I'm seeing, there's there's nothing I'd, I'd want to change except for I'd like to hire 20 more deputies once I'm hired. Good luck with if that. If I'm hired. And I'd like to get them all pay raises. Because if you're going to be the professional in the job that they do, they should be paid as such. And they shouldn't be, we shouldn't be losing out to Hagerstown, which I saw a billboard on the way in. Or we shouldn't lose them out to Frederick County or Washington County. All these other jurisdictions are willing to pay more. We need to do the same to keep our professionals here in Berkeley County. Working with the assumptions, more than assumptions, the, uh, the ex acceptance, we have limited budget, so we have to maximize our dollars. Uh, you've mentioned at least two different areas that you like to emphasize. Crisis de-escalation mm -hmm. is one. More general debt is working across the board. Uh, I'm going to put you in a what-if game. With, with a fixed budget, wh which of these two would you emphasize? I would try to get the best out of both. I mean, honestly, I would I would ask for more federal funding uh, because there's federal money out there, and we just have to find the grant writers and find the correct grants to put out for. That's working on the assumption we're not doing that already. We actually have a very we have a very aggressive grant writer now. Mm -hmm. There's just so much that we can get. So I'm I'm working on the and it's it's a fairly valid assumption that we're not going to have a huge escalation of dollars uh, into the uh, sheriff's department. The, I think the county government's done a decent job uh, and a commendable job of trying to fund the sheriff. But looking at that billboard you referred to, I drive by it every day as well. Eighty six thousand dollars, I think, and then. A signing bonus, nearly a hundred thousand dollars when we wrap those two together. That's that's dreaming, I think, at this point in time. So, without the ability of hiring twenty more deputies and setting up a new department, how would you better manage the the resources we have today? Uh, I would I would I would make a non-emergency uh, where the uh, deputies wouldn't have to respond. Uh, people could go online and file certain reports. If there's a need for a deputy, a deputy will respond. A deputy will take a report. A deputy will find out the situation and act upon it accordingly. Um, it, the better use of manpower uh, for 10 hour shifts, four days a week, um, to check our task force out, uh, see where we have people, see where we possibly could bring them back. Um, as for budgeting and budgeting constraints, uh, we could always petition the state government, which is sitting on a, what a $1.5 billion surplus. If we're supposedly the third most populous county in West Virginia, I, I think we should get the money for that to make the community safer. I mean, it's not too hard to write to the governor and explain, this is the reason I need 20 more deputies. This is the reason my deputies need to be paid more because they're leaving for Maryland. They're leaving for Virginia. Hey, it's West Virginia. Let's take care of let's take care of our own. Let's show them that we really love law enforcement. Put your money where your mouth is. You're saying, well, hey, we're pro law enforcement. Show me the money. Show me the money so we can take care of our deputies and I can hire enough deputies to make this whole community safe. David Jackson is our guest here on the program, candidate for sheriff of Berkeley County. This is the first office that he has uh, run for, by the way. Uh, have you handled a budget before? As this is an administrative post as well, you're in charge of the sheriff's department's budget. Have you been in charge of a budget before, David? Uh, with the Air Force, um, briefly, a um, uh, multi-million dollar budget for our aircraft and uh, deployments. But that's about it. I mean, I've not been involved in a law enforcement budget mm -hmm. because our budget in D.C. was handled, of course, by the chief and her staff at that point in time. Um, so, no, I, I've never handled a law enforcement budget before. Do you have experience managing people? Oh, yes, I do. I used to be a supervisor for my shift when I was with the Metropolitan Police Department. How many officers did you manage? Anywhere from 50 to 75. What did you find were the biggest challenges of doing that and what lessons uh, were learned in your experience performing that duty? Uh, my, my crew was a professional crew. I was only there to oversee or to classify certain situations. So as, as long as you treat them professional, 
they're gonna just treat them with the same amount of respect you expect back um putting them into details finding certain areas making action plans for if you have a person who's stealing packages off of porches make an action plan start a little four or five man team set it up this is your plan this is what you're going to do and give me an after action report when you're done i mean it, with policing it's all about reactionary um you can be proactive in many areas, like I said, with drug enforcement. Traffic enforcement seems to be a, an issue in this area, too, with the speeding and everything, because everybody tells me speeding, speeding, speeding. And it's just about utilizing the manpower to the best ability that you can and putting their strengths to use. Do you have an I-81 strategy with the Sheriff's Department if you became the new sheriff of Berkeley County? That you mentioned speeding that would be exhibit a for speeding in berkeley county yes sir i would i would ask a traffic division or to start a traffic enforcement unit and put a couple officers on that to run certain times during the day to put one or two deputies on 81 just to do traffic enforcement and also to write to the state to see if we can possibly get photo radar to do speed enforcement it works well in maryland it slows down a lot of people and it would, I think it would be very beneficial for all of Berkeley County going from Maryland to Virginia. Unless the legislators have changed their mind, yeah. that will never happen in West Virginia. Yeah, that's a legislative action. We've actually talked about that in the past, yeah. and there's no sentiment for it. Yeah, I, I know Craig Blair has come out in times past and been adamantly against it. He may have changed his mind. I don't think so. I don't think so either. So, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the things we discussed about for work zones and school zones, and it's a non starter in the yeah. state. Uh, at this time uh, regarding that, at least anyway. Uh, let's uh, hear about your air marshal experience, David, if you don't mind telling us a bit more about those two years. Uh, I was hired in uh, directly after 9-11. Uh, went to Fletzi in Artesia, New Mexico. Uh, did my training there, and then I was stationed out of the Washington field office. It was a very high-speed, high-demand, high-stress job. And uh, within the first year I was there, I did a little over a thousand flights across the United States. Do so you just spend your entire week flying around the country? Yes, sir. You're a big guy. Yeah. That had to be miserable <laughs> in those seats for a thousand flights. It, it, it could be trying. I mean, when you go across and you're flying from uh, Washington Dulles to San Diego, yeah. it's a six hour flight, it can be. But during these, I was able to get up and walk around. Yeah. Because most passengers do. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the whole thing was to blend in. Right. Did you have any incidents? Uh, not that I'm allowed to talk about. Fair enough. Yeah. Rob Lowe, you know, very active in a lot of aspects of Berkeley County. He was an air marshal several years as well. I did not know that. Yeah. If I, I did, think, I forgot. I, I think Rob probably had left the service by the time you joined, David, uh, air marshal. But yeah. I have a question. In, in preparing for the show last night, I was trying to look you up on on the internet couldn't find a thing uh, it, do you have a website is there have, uh, where Jack, do people find out it was about only you? raised because of the air marshal incident yeah <laughs> 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 he's witness protection that's a whole different story <laughs> oh no 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 no, 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 no. Um, jackson for sheriff uh or jackson for then hyphen sheriff i'm under facebook uh jackson for sheriff west virginia instagram um, I do have my platforms out there. It explains about 26 things. Um, it's ever evolving. So I'm adding more and more uh, on my Facebook page. I have numerous things describing scams that affect the elderly, uh, scams that affect and you everybody. And you let the record be known. He looked right at you. you. <laughs> Excuse me, seniors. <laughs> um, elderly works. I have no problem. Um, I, uh, also about drugs, it has stuff there on dealing with fentanyl, dealing with heroin, and uh, I believe cocaine's on the page. It also states uh, the ideas of utilizing drones in law enforcement and what oversight would be involved. Um, and it, like I said, it explains a lot about my platform. I mean, all, all 26 things that I have uh, listed so far. And it, it, anybody can take a look. Anybody can... Friend, I would ask anybody who would want to write in questions, critiques, I, I'll answer you. I mean, I, I just have a completely open door. I mean, if you have a good idea and I could utilize it and it would benefit 
Berkeley County or the state of West Virginia, I'm fine with that. I mean, I'm fine sharing with other people, with other departments, other jurisdictions. If it shows that it could be beneficial, let's let's share it. I mean, there's no need just saying me. I would I would go to Sheriff Hansen in Jefferson County saying, hey, this works really well. Here's something you can try. I mean, it and it just makes the area so much better for everyone. You know, the uh, there are commenters in our Facebook crowd who are relieved that you haven't used the words woke and tyranny yet in your interview with us, uh, by the way, David. If you want to throw those in there just to take a few more people off, you <laughs> go right ahead, just toss them, chuck them on out there. Uh, final minute is yours. What would you like to say to our audience out there, David? I'm, I'm, I'm here for the people. Uh, like I said, I believe that we should serve the people of Berkeley County. Uh, I would like a citizen advisory council if once I do that, where I would have insight with the Berkeley County Commission and certain elements from Jarrettstown, Inwood, Bunker Hill, uh, Spring Mills, uh, Falling Waters, uh, Martinsburg, all these little city hubs in this area where I, I would have them get together at least once a month to explain, hey, these are our issues in the area. Can you help us address them? So that way I do know what the heartbeat of Berkeley County is and what, what needs to be addressed. You know, there is one question I did want to ask in regards to school safety and uh, the debate over the last year about uh, uh, SROs in schools and whether or not there should be uh, some type of armed ability to arm yourself inside the schools, whether that uh, come from uh, teachers themselves or volunteers in the classroom. If you were the sheriff of Berkeley County, what would you like to see in regards to school safety and SRO involvement or otherwise? Uh, I would like to see a armed school security branch to start up for Berkeley County. That way it would free up my free up the deputies of Berkeley County to go do other actions that are necessary. So it would be a force multiplier. Um, by having the armed security at the school, they would have the sheriff's department would have oversight with them. As for teachers being armed, that's up to the legislature. I, I, my personal opinion is if you're going into a school and you have, a, God forbid, an active shooter situation, do you really want to, when you're looking for the shooter, to come across an armed teacher in the hallway with a gun in their hand? Uh, because You mean it, as a sheriff going inside that school? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I see what you're saying. Because uh, you, don't, you don't want to make one bad situation into three or four. Um, it, that's up to the legislature to decide that. My job is to sit there and make sure the kids are safe in school, make sure the teachers are safe in school, make sure the parents don't have to worry about their children. God forbid something happens. I, 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 I want there to be a, an armed security guard or someone in the school to just be that deterrent. Do you have time for another question? I do not. Okay. But the next time he's on, write that one down and save it. Right. All right.